welcome back guys um so we start by bootstrapping tari um and um to start i'll click on the quick start um yeah we are provided with um series of ways in which we can bootstrap on tari um i would love to bootstrap it with vit right um so let me see Mm. Mm. Okay, um, so let's follow this manual to bootstrap Tauri with Vit. Um, the first thing is to install Create Tauri app, um, which can be installed on using several package managers. Um, but I would prefer to use Kaggle because I already have Rust installed. And Kaggle installed as well. So if you don't know, Kaggle is like um the package manager for Rust, the official package manager for Rust, and I think the only package manager for Rust. Um, you know, in JavaScript we have PNPM, we have NPM, we have Yarn. So for Rust, we have Kaggle. I already have Kaggle installed, and I believe I already have Create Tari app installed. So Let me bootstrap the app. Um, my package manager, I want to use PMPM. And um, I want to use React. I mean, let's go with the boring <laughs> old React, React TypeScript. Yeah, cool. So let me see the into spot. Light up right and um pn pnpm install to install all the uh, dependencies and um so on my computer right i already an alias pnpm as p so i can just say p um tari which is a sub command to execute the tari binary then we want run tell Taro we want to run the dev environment a dev build which support live edit and everything so we can run dev um so we can see this will start two things really it started um over here and we can see it started the front end the front end server localhost and it also starts compiling the actual tower shell itself the hub so yeah so we build the front end with react or any front end framework of our choice as you can see with the bootstrap tool with the creatory app bootstrap tool cool so we have a save a blank app <laughs> which vids tower and react <laughs> perfect so um what i will go about is um i will go about teaching you um the folder structure in this um in this episode really um so let me stop this uh, um open my favorite test editor nvim right <laughs> yeah um so we are presented with um with um series of folders um node modules of course that is what we are um, our javascript um packages are downloaded um so the public um, it's where you store your public assets. Remember, Tauri allows you to build um, the front end with HTML and CSS, really. So you have to have a public folder because when you run your live server, yeah. So it's you. So your public folder is where you store your static assets. So the source is for the front end, right? As you can see, we have our um, main.tsx, just a regular React application, right? So we have um we have assets as well. So um, this is nothing fancy. This is what you get if you bootstrap like if vit up stock vit up. So yeah. So um we have um source tari. So this is the code base for the tari project itself. Yeah, we can see we have built the tariers, which is what is run whenever you want to build your tari your tari project, right? Um, so inside source itself, we have source, 
So this is where the, you write your whole tower application. Um, we'll come to this later. Let's go back to the main structure. Like I've said, um, your front it's like your front end application. So the front end HTML and CSS, the back end Rust. Um, so yeah, and we have some TS config. We have some Vit config. Pretty go cool, right. So um, let, let's check the package the JSON, right? So so we can see our dependencies. We have React React DOM, Tauri apps API. So this is like the JavaScript SDK for Tauri, which you can use to use to communicate with the Tauri backend. And um, yeah, I think that is all we need to know about this. Yeah, and also, yeah, you can see the script. We have Vit, right? Build, preview, then Tauri, pretty good. Cool. So um, let's go into the, I mean, let's ignore the front end first. Let's go to the source. And um, yeah, we have um target. This is our build, where your build resides, your build, your dependency build and your final build. This is where it resides, um, your host build rather. Yeah. So um, let's move into the source and into the main. Um, so whenever you kind of, <coughs> excuse me. Yeah. So whenever you run um your Rust project, right? Um, you have the main function, which is the entry point to your application. So here we can see we have um, the Tauri Builder, right? Um, and we are using the default Tauri Builder. So it's going to like build the default Tauri Builder. Then in this, we can skip this for now. Then yeah, in Vokandla, we'll get back to this later. And then we have um this guy run, which kind of runs the app. But if the app fails to run, then we can lock this error, right? Yeah. <coughs> yeah. So um sorry for my <laughs> truth. <laughs> yeah, so that is it. I mean, that's how simple it is. And um let's play with the app itself. Where so let me run the program again. Right. So we can see things for ourselves. How awesome Tower is. Um so we have um this doc um template right um let me find it it should be under sars app.tsx right um so so we have um our imports over here we are using react right input in book yeah cool so we have um grid so let me enter my name Victor and greet. Hey, hello, Victor. You've been greeted from Rust. <laughs> so essentially, we can see this is just like um, this is just like a regular React application. But what is different right away is from here. You notice this invoke that it is that is imported from the Tower SDK, right? And um, we have this greet function, right? Uh, which Calls the invoke and the name, right? Passes an argument name. So yeah, um, I'll explain what invoke does really. So um, now that you see now this is just like a regular React app. Um, so what invoke does is um, perhaps you should even check. I mean, we should read the docs first. Um, it said it sends a message to the backend. It's that simple. So we assume, yeah, the first parameter will be the command, while the second parameter is the hugs, right? Then it's going to return response from the back end. So yeah. So think of it like you're making requests to the back end side, which is Rust. So from the front and the back end. And um, that means somewhere in the back end, this command has been registered that should be callable from the front end. So this should be like a Rust function that will be called from the front end. And the, the Rust function is um is going to accept some argument, which is the name, right? Um so if we go to the main.rs, um, which is backend, the the main the entry point of our backend, um over here you can see this function called grid with this um directive. <coughs> Sorry, yeah, it's a macro. 
So um, so Rust macro um is really just a code. Is it really just a piece of macro that that get expand and write code? So what this this is like a so it, this macro takes this entire code function declaration and wrap it with some piece of code, right? Um, let me see if I can. Expand macro fully. Okay, it doesn't work. Yeah. Um. So, but don't think too much about it. So, in order to declare like a tower command, so a tower command is a function that can be called from the front end. So you define the function in the back end, right? Then you put in your your macro to tell Rust that oh, this function is a tower command, right? So let me put it as simple as that. And um, yeah, so you can see we have um, our name and this is the string slice, right? So um, it's a string. For well, time you use type script there, yeah, it's a string, but yeah, in Rust it's called string slice. And um, then we, <coughs> we format hello world, the name you did, you know, then we return it. So um, yeah, in Rust, the last statement, right? without a semicolon is a return stuff. So literally we are returning back the string to the front end. So if you notice on the front end code over here, right? Um, we have this set gr grid message, right? Which is going to get displayed. Uh, grid message, yeah, over here. So, uh, so yeah, to test out if this, this is working, let's add like modified, right? Um, yeah, like this. So let, let me say John, then click on grid. Oh yeah, you see modified, beautiful. I mean, essentially that's how you build <laughs> <laughs> if it, an app with Tari, pretty cool, really, really awesome. Is that easy? So yeah, you write your Rust code. Yeah. Oh, I almost forget. So um, declaring your command isn't the only thing you need to do. You need to re actually register the command. So in order to register the command, you pass it into this macro, this tower regenerate and la macro, right? So um, what it does is um, it accepts a list of command functions and create an undo that allows it to be called from GS with the info function. So, so let me create another, um, another command, fn, let me see, um, oh, right. Uh, so, command string. Bah. Right. So, I mean, since, um, we are not like really, yeah, let me see. I want to accept bars. It's going to be a string slice. Yeah. Then I say bars. Something like this. Um so I need to specify the return type of my stuff to be a string. Pretty good then. I have declared my command, right? Uh so I need to register it over here, then I can put comma, then I say four. Beautiful, isn't it? So let's go to the front end side of things. So I invoke, right? Over here, yes. we want to swap out grid with four. So over there, then let me test out with Victor. Then we should get different string this time around. Oh, uh, what's wrong? <laughs> Something is wrong. Um, 
Perhaps I need to restart. Raspberry is because um, this should have um, restarted itself. Let me see once again. Victor. Oh, that's red. Oh, yeah. Sorry. My bad. I forgot. Baz. Yeah, the argument. Yeah, that's one thing you need to keep note. Um, the argument to this command is bars because um, I defined it over here to be bars, right? So, yeah. So, if I type Victor, then click on grid. Yeah. So, you can see the text over here. Um, essentially, that's how you, you know, um, you, you do your authority thing. <laughs> Yeah, um, so one more thing if I go is um is the tower config.json, right? Um this is a really essential um file you need to keep in mind with. So it contains a configuration about your tower app. So let me kind of fold everything so we can have um, a clear picture of what we are dealing with. So we have um the build, right? So um you know when I run um P Tari dev, right? Um, I just run these, but then you can notice it spawns, it starts, it starts, uh, you can see this running before dev command, then it runs pmpm.dev and, uh, and, um, if you, if you check the package.json for what dev is, then dev kind of spawns the vits stuff which spawns um our local server right our live server for the for the front end project yeah so this is where it's defined this is where the magic happened so before build yeah so if if to say yeah i want to build my hub i run p tari then build um okay yeah so we cannot build now because we need to update some stuff in this file I'm showing you. Yeah, but before build command, we firstly build the front end project, right? Before then it builds the binary. Because um the, the binary will bundle together the front end project into it. So it does. So yeah, that's how it works. Um I think that's the interesting stuff about this close. So let me open this package, right? This just contains information about um how project um right yeah like the product name and the version so i think uh we need to uh, let me see bundle yeah so um we'll come back to what allow list does it's not really that important now i mean yeah but we need to still understand it so the bundle is um our hub bundle when you build right so the category of the hub copyright blah 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 so it says we should come over here and um we should change it from default to com.dari.dev so let us say com dot um 12px dot um spot light okay so let me see if this will work. I'm kind of skeptical with the 12 px. Oh, it did work, right? So um, it's building the Tauri hub. That's pretty cool. So we're just gonna wait for it to finish building. <laughs> So um, you can see it's building the bundle, um, the disk image for this project. Pretty cool. 
um yeah i think it's done so let me find a um download i'll open my finder window um Okay, I mean, I can open it via the command line. <laughs> so, where this will be, like, let us check the file structure. So, like I said, your build will always reside in the target. Um, we never specify if this is a production build, but let us check the release. Let me check the bundle, macOS. Then we have the app over here. Right. Um... So let me just open this place um, and I find that, right? So um, I'll go to Sustary Target Release, right? Then I want to go to Bundle, then macOS, then voila, we have this uh, macOS application. And yeah, so this is the application. Um, we run grid vector, then we have a um, boom, and we've built our first um, Tauri app. Um, so the next thing is, how do we convert this to behave like the macOS Spotlight app, like something like Recast? All right, yeah. So like, how do we make it behave like how Recast does? I want I press a key command, it shows, and if I click outside, it dies. You know, so I guess that's what we'll be doing next. Um, yeah. So see you in the next episode. Bye.